Hey everyone, welcome back to your daily dose of neat code. So today let's solve the problem, move zero. So while this is an easy problem, it's also a pretty good problem to learn some you know, fundamental tricks to be able to solve harder problems. So we're given an array of numbers and we want to move all the zeros within this array to the right side of the array, all the way to the right side, while maintaining the relative order of all the other elements that are not zero. Now your first instinct for this problem might be, so let's just take a look at this example array. We've got some zeros in here, but we've also got some non-zeros like three and 12. The easiest way would just be to create two arrays, right? Read through every value in the input. So when we get to a zero, we could put that in one of the arrays. And when we get to a non-zero value like one, we put that in the other array. And so we get a second zero, we put that in the array. Then we see a three, we put that in this array, and then we see a 12 and we put that here and then you know we just basically put them into two separate arrays now we can combine the arrays of course we want to take these zeros and then add them to the end of the array because this is what we want the output to actually look like we also maintained the relative order of the non-zero elements as you can see but the problem is that we used extra memory when we created two separate arrays but can we really just follow this idea of you know partitioning these values without creating two separate arrays can we do it in place because that's really what this problem is asking us to do can we do it with o of one extra memory and yes you can and if you're familiar with the algorithm called quicksort or even quick select you are probably familiar with how to partition uh, values in place. Now this uh, partition algorithm can be generalized. In this case, we're doing zero and non-zero values. We could say, you know, every value greater than five goes in you know, one side of the array and every value less than five goes in another side, right? We could do positives and negatives. We could partition this any way we want. But in this case, we're doing it based on zero and non-zero values. And the reason I say that this problem, while it's an easy, is good to learn some fundamental tricks is because the way they worded this problem is actually, I think, intentionally trying to confuse you a little bit. They tell you to move all zeros to the end of the array, right? To the right side of the array. But they could have worded it the opposite way they could have said move all non-zero values to the left side of the array right because both of those statements are equivalent if we move all non-zeros to the left side then by default we're going to have the zeros be on the right side so that's actually what we're going to do we're going to take this problem and kind of reverse the way that we look at it we're going to solve the opposite problem which will still give us the intended result so this is the input array that we're given now, while we're gonna do this in place, I want you to pay attention to, you know, in this case, we already know that there's two zeros. So I want you to kind of pay attention to this portion of the array, these last two, because we know this is where the zeros are gonna end up. And the first three is where the non-zeros are gonna end up. So, you know, it's kind of like we have two separate arrays, but we're doing it, you know, with the memory that we have. But so how can we partition this and still maintain the relative order of these values? Well, it's very simple. We know, the non-zero values, we have one, two, three of them, they're all gonna end up in this portion of the array, these three positions, right? What we're gonna do is have a pointer. We know that the first non-zero value is gonna go here. I'm gonna call this L for the left pointer. And basically every time we see a non-zero value, we're gonna take that non-zero value and you know, let's just run through the example just to make it clear. So the first value is zero. When we see a zero, we don't do anything with it because what we're trying to do is take all the non-zeros and move them to the beginning. So we see a zero, we don't do anything, but then we get to the next value, it's a non-zero. What are we gonna do? And by the way, as we iterate through this array, we're gonna do that with our right pointer. So I'm not gonna show it, but just assume that our right pointer is over here now. It started at the beginning at the same spot as the left pointer, but now it's at the next index. So we see a one. What that tells us is we're gonna swap this value with the value at the left index. And so by doing that, we're gonna basically put a zero over here and put a one over here. Next, our right pointer is gonna be over here and we see a zero. So nothing for us to do again, right? When you see a zero, we don't do anything with it. Okay, so now, uh, since we put a value at the left index, we don't want to leave our left pointer over here. Now we want to actually shift our left pointer to be at the next position because 
Here, we already have a non-zero value. The next time we see a non-zero value like this three, we want to put it over here where there is a zero value. And uh, our right pointer was over here previously. Now we're gonna put our right pointer over here. But before we even continue, just notice this array. We have visited the first two values, right? The first two values are already partitioned, right? We have a one at the beginning and then we have a zero, right? That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to put all zeros at the right side and all non-zeros at the left side. So we've already done that, but we've only done it for the first two values. So. Uh, let's continue. We get to the third value over here. It's a zero. We don't do anything with zeros, remember? We ignore them. We leave them as they are. So again, the first three values now are partitioned, right? We have a one, zero, and a zero. Uh, next, we get to this value. We put our right pointer over here. It's a three, so it's a non-zero. So we uh, swap it with the value that is at the left pointer. So we put a zero over here, and we put a three over here. Right, and now our left pointer from this position is also gonna be shifted uh, over here. And once again, you can see that the array is partitioned, right? The first four values at least, right? Because those are the ones that we visited so far are partitioned. Lastly, we're gonna visit the last element uh, over here. It's again, just gonna be swapped with the value at the left pointer over here. So we can put the 12 here and then we can put the zero here. So as you can see now, our array is one, three, 12, zero, zero. That's exactly what we wanted to do. We maintained the relative order and we partitioned it. We put the zeros at the right side that's the entire algorithm. Now let's actually code it up. So now let's code it up. So like I said, we're gonna have two pointers. The left pointer is initially gonna be at the beginning. The right pointer is also gonna be at the beginning, but the right pointer is going to iterate through every single position in the array. So uh, it's gonna iterate through the entire length of the input array. And uh, we had a very simple condition, right? If the number is zero, we ignore it. If the number is non-zero, so if uh, you know this is non-zero, then we do a swap operation, right? We swap uh, the left index with the right index. So we can actually do that with one line of code in Python, but in some languages, maybe you can use a helper function, uh, like a built-in library function, or you can just you know create a temporary variable and then do the swap like that. But in Python, this is how we're gonna do it. We can do it with one line of code. So we're assigning the right value uh, to the left position. We're assigning the left, position, uh, left value to the uh, right position. And remember, every time we do a swap, we wanna make sure we increment the left pointer. Uh, the right pointer, though, is going to be incremented uh, on every single iteration of the loop from the for loop. But that's actually the entire code. I know it's probably uh, looks easier than you might have expected, uh, but this is definitely a useful problem. Let's run it to make sure that it works. But this algorithm is definitely useful. It comes up in many other algorithms as well. Like I mentioned, quick sort and many other algorithms. As you can see on the left side, yes, it's very efficient and it works. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.